Hi, my name is April. My book, Wacky Witches and Their Peculiar Familiars, just came out in English just under a month ago. And because it's almost Halloween, I thought it would be nice to do a little reading of said book. So here that is. <laughs> Witches like to sing and dance, witches dare to take a chance, but would you ever want to bet which animal they'd call a pet? Some witches prefer toads and rats, occasional owls or sleek black cats. Sometimes witches need protection, others just want some affection. And when they're busy brewing spells with fungi, turnips, cockle shells, they need someone to help them stir, not just a cat to hiss and purr. These witches know a thing or two about recruiting someone who will serve as lackey, consort, friend, as trusted ally till the end. A pig is sweet and oh so clever. Swap for a toad, oh never ever. He gets the paper, does her taxes. The only thing he really lacks is manners, maybe basic hygiene, but Gwen makes sure that he is clean. She loves him dearly, that fat pig, even when he chews her wig. Priya knows fire and fur are useful. For some potions, it is crucial. Use a very fresh ingredient or the outcome could be deviant. In comes Snake, who sheds its skin, from its tail up to its chin, and as reward it will suffice to feed it loads of juicy mice. Every day, from dawn till dusk, this makaki tends to husk the hulls from rice once freshly dried, with dear witch Hedwig by his side. He's also good at playing spy, from branch to branch he'll quickly fly, he listens in on Hedwig's foes and tells her everything he knows. Brews and charms can be quite weighty, especially when you're nearly 80. To carry these loads on its back, none can beat a strong old yak. Yaks speak with a gentle moo. Their milk tastes great, says Grand Witch Woo. Their lengthy lashes, big brown eyes, help forgive the fiendish flies. Bess lives in a smaller home. Rumour has it she's half gnome. Her quaint and slightly run-down shack has nooks and crannies it could crack. And if you have a tiny house, you really only need a mouse. Or two or three or maybe four or twenty-something, maybe more. Izara plays the violin in concert with her pangolin. He sings and plays the tambourine and keeps the harmonies so lean. Though big bears can be quite scary, this bear's sweet and very merry. At sunrise to the lake he'll plod, encumbered by his fishing rod, and later with his sense of smell, which Ursa cannot cook too well, he uses his keen taste for fish and cooks up one delicious dish. Marie builds houses for her geese, gets eggs and feathers without cease, and if intruders do come round, they sit upon them like a hound. This busy witch called Miss Montclair is always whizzing here and there, giving tarot readings all through town. Lucky she's got a parrot around. She taught him to no longer squawk. He now can use real words to talk. So when she is out on her own, there's someone to pick up the phone. Morgan lost her hand to a shark, and though it did leave quite a mark, she persevered with loads of help from something living in her kelp. This crab he's known to dig and prune, her garden till up comes the moon. Besides, she now need never crouch. He fetches things lost in the couch. Quite unique is Sorceress Roe. With just one breath, she makes sprouts grow. A soft caress from her thin hand makes wilted plants proudly stand. She has, of course, some helpful worms who fill her days with twists and squirms. They munch the earth per rose suggestion and feed the herbs with their digestion. Daisy can't walk on her own. She needs someone to mow the lawn. And when the night's too cold to sleep, she'll shear some wool from her dear sheep. Agnes is a busy witch, no time to dust and scrub and stitch, for scouring plates until they're bare. Raccoons, though, tend to have a flair. Their tiny hands help them excel at washing up and cleaning well. Meanwhile, Agnes cooks her brew and feeds her helpers when she's through. A squirrel is Joan's only colleague. He's old and suffers from fatigue, and when he wakes up off he struts, he brings back heaps of scrumptious nuts. Meryl has a lot to do, so she's got a tortoise who is quiet, calm and at his best as doorstop, paperweight, footrest. 
Lover of things, collector of stuff, Sarah finds it rather tough to find the space for all she owns, like shells and books and pretty stones. The mass of shells she would assemble made her ladder creak and tremble. Instead, she's got her tall giraffe that sorts the stuff on her behalf. And me? Well, I myself prefer a companion with some soft, warm fur to play catch with and jump in puddles, a friend that loves to give me cuddles. Though I like a good old frog, I love my sweet, if yappy, dog. He's loyal, smart, a little fat, and he'll always be better than a bloody old cat. So that, my friends, is the end of that. And now I would love to know what familiar you would choose. <laughs>